Welcome to Random Thoughts. Ray Sean Blyden here. We have lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. Don't forget to visit politicalbombshow.com. And if you are an unsigned artist and you're looking for beats, visit raydog.com, R E H D O G G dot com, and you can get your beats there, lease, or if you want exclusive rights, you can reach out and we can negotiate let's get right into the news here we're going to start with a story that i find really not so, so surprising it is coming from redstate.com u.s restaurants bars are falling on hard times because of what else other than Bidenomics. That's right. Let's read this story real quick here. Like a lot of folks, my wife and I enjoy a good restaurant meal. Sidebar, I use, I like to cook. I will eat out every now and then, but nonetheless, let's continue. In fact, one of my bucket list items is to become a Tokyo Ramen King. I don't know what that is, but if you do, you can certainly let me know. Which requires one to eat a ramen bowl in each of Tokyo's 23 city wards. Okay, sounds yummy. It's a completely unofficial title, but I still plan to do it. Okay, I knew it sounded made up. Every Saturday, we enjoy lunch in a lodge to the north, which is on pretty safe ground, business-wise, due to a healthy summer tourist trade and its location right on the park's highway. But wait, there's more. In many parts of the United States, restaurants, especially Small, locally owned ones are suffering under inflation and dun 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 by dynamics. Of course, of course. And New York has problems. Well, they have more than problems. They, many of the problems, like their, their stupid mayor, Mayor Adams, I don't even remember his, what is his, I don't know his full name, but Addie Adams wants to give illegal immigrants free everything and taken away from none other than black black voters so it's no wonder black voters are fleeing the democrat party as well as they should they should have never been there and i well i wasn't well technically i was there way back when was it in the 90s i had a friend Let's call him ML. We don't need to mention names. He was a Muslim and a, a black Muslim. He wanted me to go to the Million Man March. Now, I was coming from, you know, I came from St. Thomas. I didn't really pay much attention to politics and stuff like that. But I always knew I was conservative based on my love. And I liked Reagan a lot. So I knew I was conservative, but nonetheless, I agreed to go to this Million Man March. It sounded like, like something cool. He was very passionate about it. And being that I was a friend of his, I said, okay, okay, ML. I almost said his name there. I said, yeah, I'll go. And so we marched to Washington, D.C. It was a great experience up until I didn't know who Louis Farrakhan was. So... It was his time to speak, and instantly, I just felt that this guy is racist, was basically evil white man this, and all kinds of evil, you know, bad stuff. I walked out, and so that put a damper on, I almost said his name again, ML and my, um, our friendship. But anyway, I say all that to say, when I was there, they wanted to, as they call it in these days, get out the vote, which is fine, but they didn't give me a choice. They gave me the card, 
and it already marked Democrat on it, which infuriated me. I was like, I should have a, if I wanted to be a Democrat on my own, then let me be a Democrat on my own. Don't check the box for me. That sound familiar like voter mail-in voting? Anyway, that's another story. But yeah, they checked the box for me. So I filled it up and, it, and anyway, and gave it to them. But once I got back home, home was Connecticut at the time, I, I re-registered as a Republican, which is what I wanted to do in the first place, because I align myself more with what they stand for. But anyway, I'm way off track here. Let's get back on track here. Um, so New York has problems, but they are worse in other areas like the Midwest, where many and either eatery can't rely on tourist traffic. Restaurants and bars across the country, as we see, are facing a witch's brew of inflation, debt, and decreasing traffic. Restaurants are already a tricky enough business. True, I, I, God bless them. I could never be a restaurant owner. There's just too much going on. Too much going on. Restaurants are already a tricky business to run as it is. Small restaurants have an astonishing failure rate and operate on small margins. That's the thing why I wouldn't want to do it. They really do operate on small margins. My father-in-law, not mine, I'm reading the story here. My father-in-law has run cafeterias mostly on military bases for almost 60 years. Yes, really. He's almost 80 and still works full-time. You know, I ask myself that sometimes. Do I really want to be working when I'm that age, or do I want to be already retired and, you know, for the next 10 or 20 years that I have left on earth, God's willing, that I'm able to relax and, like, my church that I go to, I really, I'm not going to say envy, but I, I marvel and wait i can't wait for the day until i'm able to do what they're doing many of the seniors at my church you know they're retired so they're fully able to commit their their some their lives to christ and um you know they don't have to worry about working and and paying all the bills and all this kind of stuff i'm sure they still have bills to pay and whatnot but my point is they get to dedicate their full life to christ without worrying about working a nine to five grind every day. So I marvel at that. I can't wait until I get to that point. Nonetheless, let's continue. It's almost 80 and still works full time and has described to me many times how his locations have all always run on a pennies on the dollar margin. His cafeterias always paid his bills, but he relied on volume to make it work. For him, it's worked, but not many restaurants and bars have the benefit of having a semi-captive audience in a military base or other federal buildings. That's true. Very true. The Biden administration's horrendous spending and, to be fair, the dumps of printing money doing the Trump administration sold as pandemic st stimulus. That's the one thing that I did not like about Trump's presidency is that many people in the administration, when you said drain the swamp, you literally had to drain the entire swamp. It's just like, I don't remember what, I know I was listening, watching the Benny show on YouTube and, uh, he had one of Trump's lawyers, and I forget her name, and she agreed with Benny's analogy with that's going on with Big Fanny Fanny Willis and Big Hot Dog Nathan Wade, who um who that coward of a judge decided that hey listen, one of you guys have to leave. It makes no sense. They 
their analogy was that's like peeing in the pool and emptying half of the water. Well, guess what? There's still pee in the pool. You have to drain the entire pool. So my point is that Trump did not drain the swamp, and therefore that's why at every turn he was being undermined because he's getting bad advice. They were lying to him. And this is, you know, he should have never, ever just listened to the advice of many of these advisors, like the Dr. Fauci Ouchi, you know, he needs to be in prison, in, in just in my humble opinion. But anyway, let's get back to this. The pan, his sold as a pandemic stimulus has been widely infla, inflationist, inflationary can't speak today, add to that stupidity like California's, haven't heard from you, tell me why must I cry, jacking up minimum wage, like, speaking of that, yes, I, um, where did I see this story, California is basically, the minimum wage right now, where's my phone, I don't have it in front of me, but their minimum wage I wish I could have my, find my phone. Well, I guess I could research it here. Or I could ask, uh, let's see what, uh, what uh, what's her name? Hey, Alexa, what is California's minimum wage? Okay, last year it was $15. But I know I heard, I saw a story somewhere. I'm not mistaken that it's supposed to, jump to 20 something dollars does anyone know what i'm talking about let me know in the comments because i know that they are jacking it up to a horrendous price nonetheless um stupid stupidity like california's jacking up minimum wage for fast food workers and you have a business model that is simply no longer tenable it's true Many of these companies, I don't, I mean, it's just like New York. They are essentially telling investors, don't come to our city because you will be sued for no reason at all. And who wants to go there to invest? The same with California. You, What fast food business is going to stay there and say, we're going to pay 20 something dollars an hour for unskilled workers? It makes no sense. No sense at all but anyway uh you have a business model that is simply not sustainable the federal government shut down the entire economy in 2020 floated loans to businesses that they are having trouble now repaying and got people accustomed to doing more cooking and eating at home Again, for me, I've been that way. I've never been much on going out to eat. It's healthier for me, number one, to cook at home. And number two, it's, it saves money in my pocket. When I first came over here, I had to learn how to take a penny and make it stretch or make a dollar and make it stretch. And so I've always had that mindset. Even growing up, I remember my grandmother, Grandma Blyden, she... She knew how to t take a dollar and make it stretch. I, stretch. I remember, you know, my mom and all of my aunts and, and uh, children. It was almost like mom, my grandma. She was like a the daycare for all of us, and she would take what little food we had and stretch it so us all can eat. So, anyway. That is how I got my, you know, learn how to take a dollar and make it stretch. This is how, this is having an impact today on restaurants. And it really is. Every time the government gets involved in economics, listen to me closely, it ends up making things worse. Joe Biden and Gavin Newsom clearly don't have the marbles to figure this out. Biden doesn't have the mind either, but I digress. 
Indeed, you could make a good argument that Joe Biden hasn't had any marbles to speak of for a while now. See, they said exactly what I said. Maybe at some point, maybe we'll get some public servants who are capable of absorbing this information, but, and I'm with him here, I won't hold my breath for it. So what do you think of that story? Do you think that it is, it is, uh, it is, what do you call it, hyperbole? It's, it's, or do you think that that is actually the case right now? Like this other story, Biden proves how economically illiterate he is with latest vote Biden remarks over housing. Let's see what this is all about. Joe Biden is desperate when it comes to finding votes as he seems to be losing people left and right. He's tried buying votes with student loans, cancellation, fiasco, which just transfers the debt to the backs of other American taxpayers who didn't agree to it and didn't get the benefits of loans. He doesn't understand, care, that subsidizing the sky-high college prices will only make the problem worse in addition to making other people pay for the cost of his actions. What do you think about that, folks? Do you think that the man has good economic sense? Don't answer that. If you said yes, then you, my friend, has no sense at all either. Let's see. We have a New Jersey Democrat who whines that whines Trump not welcome in the Garden State. And Trump responds with six-figure crowd. Interesting. Let's see what we got here. So you can't see what I'm looking at here, but someone's holding up, you know, the mugshot of Trump, and it says on there, never surrender. Never surrender. So a tweet from Mickey Shirell says, Donald Trump, you're not welcome in New Jersey. Okay. Let's see. Honey, someone's retweeted. Honey, you realize Trump is a New Jersey homeowner and business owner? If you get elected, he'll be one of your constituents. constituents. Yeah, the, the people have no common sense. They have no common sense. Learn to read the room. Congresswoman, better yet, don't underestimate how sick and tired of that people are of woke Democrats and their dementia-rattled, befuddled president. Joe Biden, meanwhile, speaks to groups of anywhere be between none and a few hundred. I would doubt a few hundred. I would say between none and a, a couple few. I don't know, a couple of, I don't think that's a word. I mean, I don't think that makes sense. But anyway, his campaign depends on shorter, crisper speeches, mostly because he's only capable of being short before his meds wear off. Dun, 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 dun. You got it. Now, let's face it. Joe Biden was never capable of being crisp on the best day he ever had which was many decades in the past. Yeah, he's coming from Jim Crow era, isn't he? That's another, yeah. All righty. Who's the racist one now? Not Trump. The former president has been making noise about New York and now New Jersey being in play in the elections in November. I'm skeptical of that in the extreme 
both are blue states made so mostly by their major urban areas. But that's the case even so. New Jersey has a, po a population of over 9 million and while 80 to 100,000 at a Trump rally in New Jersey is, is pretty impressive, it's still a drop in the hat or a drop in the bucket when set against the deep blue Newark, Jersey City, and Patterson. The same applies to New York, New York, capturing the red mostly rural areas in New York wouldn't be enough. Trump would have to go into the Big Apple and gain a lot of votes there to flip the state. Granted, Trump has made some eye-opening appearances in the city, but the smart money says in November, New York's and New Jersey's electoral college votes will go to George Biden and Joe Biden, or whoever the Democrat nominee ends up being. So they threw that in there. Are you in the camp that they're going to, I, I've heard rumors that when it comes to the Democrat convention, they're going to try to slip someone else in that had uh, Kennedy's name mentioned there. But what do you think? Do you think they're going to do that? Let me know in the comments below if you think they're going to try to flip the switch on it because they know that their guy is horrible. They really do. So let's see, what else do we have here? What else do we have? Let's see, Biden administration has been hiding intel on location of Hamas leaders in betrayal of Israel. Does that, does that uh, surprise anyone? It doesn't surprise me. There's no other way to read this except that the Biden administration has been protecting dun, 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 Hamas. I, again, I hate to beat a dead horse, but you might as well, you might as well tell the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. And clearly, clearly, what president from the past would do something like this. They're the ones running the country right now. I, do I need to spell it out more or do you, do you get my drift? Okay, good. They're good, very good. So they've been protecting Hamas. If intelligence exits exists that can help pinpoint the location of Hamas leaders, it should have been given to Israel the moment it was produced. The same goes for any information about the terror tunnels. Why was the information held back from Israel? Obviously, they're asking a rhetorical question. They know why. Obama, I mean, was the White House trying to appease Iran by ensuring Hamas's survival? Or was Biden concerned about the domestic backlash from the far left if he had a hand in eliminating Hamas leader, I can't even pronounce his, his first name, I'm gonna say Sinwar, Yama 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 Sinwar, Sinwar. To only offer this intelligence after Israel called Biden's bluff on Rafa Max of political gamemanship with the president's political fortune being put over the lives of the hostages, including several Americans still being held captive. So what do you think about that story? What do you think? Are you surprised by this or not? Let's see what else we got here. Um... Devil with a Palestinian flag, Duke students 
walked out of graduation as Jerry Seinfeld introduced. As a blue devil, I was glad not to see my Alma or Alma Alma Mater plastered across TV screens these past few weeks. That all changed Sunday as extremist students walked out of graduation as comedian Jerry Seinfeld was being introduced to the speaker. Grow up, get a life, you you just get a life. Is all I can say on that. Get a life. Oh, this is this is one is rich. I mean, you've got to know that the Palestine would not approve of queers and what they would do to you if you were in their country. But yet you have queers for Palestine. Block entrance to Disney World, then Florida men show up. What's this all about? Let's see here. In the never-ending story, I mean the never-ending quest to be most insufferable people on earth, Hamas supporters, they really are the worst. Hamas supporters from the group Queers for Palestine decided to block the entrance to Disney World on Saturday. Multiple videos showed the protesters holding giant banners across the road while traffic piled up. And I'm looking at it there. And you can see them holding a big banner across the road. It wasn't long, though, before the tables turned. Florida men arrived in the form of angry motorists and the police. That's when the Hamas simps learned once again that Florida is not New York. Thank God for that. The first confrontation happened between a ticked off father who was just trying to have a fun day with his kids. Hit got out of his car and lit into the protester. But I mean, but okay, it, I don't know if it's gonna play the sound. Let's let's see. Oh, it is playing. This far, look like he's gonna hit him. Let's see. <laughs> I think they're trying to hit them with the car. This is something. And they're also cowards, by the way. They don't want to be on camera. Unbelievable. So there you have that. That's uh that voice. I can't imagine being dating her. Free, free Palestine. Uh, I would. I would have to pour hot oil down my ears so I never have to hear that again. Nonetheless, unfortunately for most of the protesters and fortunately for the rest of us, they weren't able to escape the scene. One officer immediately got traffic moving again and when backed, when backed up arrived, the handcuffs came out. Yes, very good. Very good. Free, free Palestine. <clears throat> anyway, um, what do you think about that? What would you have done? Let me know in the comments below. What else do we have here? Let's see. Now let's uh, let's go to a different source and see what we can find here. See what we can find. Uh, 
Okay, so we now in townhall.com if you're following along at home. So we already talked we already talked about the the queers for Palestine Palestine. We're not gonna talk about that again. Uh what else we got here? We already talked about Biden administration reportedly bribing Israel not to invade. Oh wait, I, yeah, we're not gonna go over there. You know, ah, uh, what else we got here? Biden is trying to rein in Israel. That's not gonna happen. The way Clarence Thomas described DC is truly terrifying. Uh, let's see. Trump flies potential VP pick to massive. Who do you think his VP pick is? I'm very curious to know. I know I like, I definitely like uh, lots of them. Vivek, I like him a lot. I mean, in 2028, for sure, if he runs, he's definitely got my support for sure. That's definitely, I'm going to vote for him for sure. But former President Donald Trump vice president list is picking up speculation after a surprise guest joined in 2024, hopeful at his massive New Jersey rally. Flying in on the former President Trump Force One campaign plan, Governor Doug Burgum was seen ex exiting the aircraft after it landed in a deep blue state Saturday afternoon. An April Access report revealed that Burgum has quickly moved up Trump's vice president's short list believing he could be a safe choice who could attract moderate voters. The governor and his wife reportedly remain on the plane to speak privately with Trump before emerging at the 80,000 MAGA supporting rally. Sources close to the matter told the outlet that Burgum and his wife attended Easter brunch at Trump's Mar-a-Lago Mar residence, sparking speculation, he is at the top of the 45th president list. What do you think, folks? Who do you like? Let me know in the comments. Who do you like and why? I like, I like a lot of them. I mean, there's a few women on the list that I, I like. But I would go with more of the, you know, picking up steam with the black men, specifically voters. I would probably pick someone that was black, although I, I never like to do identity politics. But I think you need to do that. Or a woman. But uh, what do you think? What do you think? Bill Maher obliter obliterated... The media last night. Here's why that was iconic. Let's see what this is all about. So it says here, Bill Maher took some pot shots last night, but it was at the media this time. And I felt I was being critic, critic, critiqued as well. Who was being critiqued as well? The town hall journalist, he used the ongoing pro Hamas demonstrations sweeping college campuses near, nationwide where police arrested 2,300. That's a lot of people, but the HBO host point was that it's the vocal minority. There are over 15 million college students. In our universities, not all of them are pro-terrorist morons. He's not wrong on that. Many times I agree, disagree with him, but I agree with him here. It's just like real life. You have so many left-wing kooks 
and any moderates, they just keep their mouths shut even though they're the, the majority. And they need to stop doing that. That's why you have all kinds of stuff like, like children going through surgery, chopping off parts and stuff. But nonetheless, I don't want to get too graphic here on that. Um, he cited, I mean, he even cited a Harvard poll that placed Palestine near the bottom of issues that 18 to 29-year-old Americans care about. He then listed his rules about media coverage in today's hyperbolic, hyperbolic atmosphere and had some pointed at everyone, including Town Hall, for using inflammatory language in headlines. Well, you know, that is true. Many, even in the YouTube space where, where you have um, creators, content creators, they are fighting for people to click on their videos, so they also use inflammatory, or I like to call it, many do clickbaits, and it infuriates me when I click somewhere and it's a clickbait story. That just pisses me off. But anyway, the irony here is that the headline for this new rules clip on the show's YouTube page was Bill Mars destroys the media. The others you know already. So what do you think about that? Do you think, I do you agree with Bill Maher or disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know, let me know, let me know. What else do we got here? Let's see. Illegal aliens may decide the outcomes of national elections without even voting. Now, this is interesting. Let's see what this is all about. If I had to guess, I would say that um, they don't have to vote because of mail-in ballots and certain people are going to fill them out. But let's see here. Heading into 2024 elections, just 37% of Americans believe that they will be both honest and open to rightful voters. That's a low amount, and it should be even lower. Among the issues driving this distrust is concern that there are no guaranteed guardrails in place to prevent non-citizens, even illegal aliens, who have arrived in the millions, that's part of their plan, obviously, under the Biden administration, from registering and casting votes. Voter registration is already largely carried out on the honor system, and in many places in the country, voter ID is not yet required to cast a vote, which irritates me here, at least where, where I used to vote. Not, not so, I haven't tried that in South Hadley. I've not, but I know what in Holyoke, when I lived there, I tried to show my ID and they, they pretty much tell me, put that thing away. So yeah, it's very, uh, very frustrating. Very frustrating indeed. I don't even want to read anymore. This is just gonna infuriate me. And I don't want to get infuriated. So let me know what you think. And if you are going to do mail-in votes or are you going to actually vote in person? That's all we got for, for today. Possibly the week. I don't know. We'll see how things are going. I purposely, I'm trying a new format where I wanted to run through various uh, stories instead of outputting it for, you know, on a, for the week. I could just uh, go ahead and do it long form. And, uh, yeah, this is how 
I'm trying this out to see how this goes. What else do we got here? Anything good? Anything good? Uh, yeah, I don't see much more here that I want to talk about, really. I mean, I'm I'm so sick and tired of of uh, what is that? What is that out there that fired uh, Kenneth Owen for saying the truth? Crisis King, like that that guy has always annoyed me. He's like a little weasel, that weasley voice. That's what it sounds like. What is his name? Ben Shapiro or whatever. He's such a a whiny. I mean. You say any time, any way I will debate you, but then beside, behind the scenes, they have a gag order for her. I mean, talk about being a wuss. I, I, what a wuss. I'm curious to know if what do you think? Do you think that they are trying to puff out their chest like I'll debate you anywhere, any, anytime, any place? But behind the scenes, they're a coward, because that's what this—that's what this obviously is. And they're being a coward because they won't. They they claim, "Oh yeah, I will debate you," but behind the scenes, they are—they are putting a gag order on her. So, what is this? What a CNN host just said about Trump and illegal immigration shows that hell might freeze over. Let's see. What do you think this is? I haven't read this ahead of time. Let's see here. It says here, is Joe Biden becoming the grim reaper for liberal media figure figures? I only saw that because it feels that one by one, He's making such prominent figures turn against him, even claiming that Trump-era policies were the correct ones on issues like illegal immigration. Of course, these folks will probably vote for Biden, of course, in November. Of course they will. Still, it's saying something about the president where even CNN's Fareed Zakaria says Biden must readopt Trump era immigration policies. Zakaria was on PBS firing line with Margaret Hoover, where the GPS host said, Millions are especially gaming the, the asylum process. Excuse me, Ryan. Ryan Saavedra. Of the Daily Wire clipped and transcribed the segment. So there you go. I'm not going to read any more of it. No more am I going to read of this. Anything else good? I don't really see much here. What do you think of the, the, the Drake situation? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't listen to and follow modern rap, so I don't know anything. But based on many stories that I've seen, it would appear that he is a just a bigger creep, like P Diddy, if not worse. I mean, targeting fourteen-year-olds allegedly. So, yeah, it's not my field of expertise. I am not going to get into it. Not going to get into it. That's why rap is whack. I don't listen to rap. Now, why am I saying, but you do rap. My rap is not like the rap that's out there, and you know it. It's not. NYC sued for denying IVF coverage to gay male couples. Let's see. You know, I was supposed to end this, but let's keep going. Let's go a little bit more. 
According to NBC News, the lawsuit comes as part of a year-long effort by the gay couple to get the Big Apple story spread in the news to amend its health benefits. In the lawsuit, the couple alleges New York, New York, that the current policies in place are discriminatory. The gay couple spread heading, spearheading the lawsuit reportedly plans to utilize IVF and surrogacy to have kids. In April 2022, the couple reportedly filed a discrimination charge with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in an effort to change the city's health care policy. This did not work out because the city stated that it does not provide IVF benefits to surrogates. What's IVF stand for? I don't really know. If anyone knows what that stands for, let me know in the comments. Reportedly, the city denies IVF benefits to gay men because it requires employees under the health care plan to meet its definition of infertility to qualify. The city's definition of infertility is the inability to conceive a child through male-female unprotected intercourse in a, cons a consecutive 12-month period or through intra-terrine intra insemination or IUI. Lesbiana, badandangandangana, lesbiana, badang I remember <laughs> There's this song when I was growing up. I don't remember the, the artist. It was a, a Spanish reggae lady. And, and all, I could, all the, I knew it was catchy. I don't know what she was saying, but I, I know it was, a, it was not for, for the LGBTQ community. It was a lesbian. But anyway, lesbian couples and single women who undergo IUI and do not become pregnant can qualify as infertile. The gay couple's lawsuit reportedly argues that the city's exclusion of gay men from being eligible for IVF benefits violates Title V, I mean 7, the Equal Protection and Due Process Clauses of the 14th Amendment and New York State and New York City Human Rights Law. But gay men, although equally incapable of conceiving a child without IVF, are always denied access to IVF under the city's health care plan. The, the, uh, the complaint states by Defining infertility in this exclusionary manner, single female employees, female employees with male partners. Does this mean transgenders? I'm just saying. Just asking a question. Can I ask a question? Female employees with female partners and male employees with female partners are always potentially eligible for some IVF benefits under the city's health care plan, but gay male employees, whether individually or with male partners, are never, never for any IVF benefits. Apparently, the gay couple has already received donated embryos they are waiting to transfer into the surrogate's body. The couple expects to pay a hundred thousand in IVF cost and and an additional 
165,000 on surrogacy. I am, what does that stuff? Do you hear him? Chip is having a nightmare. He's having a nightmare. Okay, I need to know what this means. I have to see what this, I have to look this up. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let me see. What does this mean? What is, I'm looking up what IVF is because I just have to know. IVF or in vetro fertilization, okay, that's what it means, in, in vetro fertilization, is a type of assisted reproductive technology, ART, that helps individuals or couples get pregnant. So there you go. There you go, and now you know that no one is part of the battle. Let's see what else I could. There was something else I used to do here. Uh, I have lost it. Oh, here we go. Let's go to one more, one more uh, outlet here. I've not done this in a while. Crime on CrimeOnline.com, where you have this this the uh, the uh sickest of sickest people committing heinous crimes let's run through some of this and then that's enough show for for today or the week we'll see how things goes florida man who shot his mother in the face can't use state stand your ground law to claim self-defense this is just this is interesting why did he shoot his mother in the face let's see Let's see. A Florida man who shot his mother to death doing an argument with his father nearly five years ago tried unsuccessfully this week to use the state stand your ground law to have the charges dismissed. Alexander Del Toro Jr., 32, is charged with manslaughter in the death of his mother, who was 60 years old, Cindy Gale de la Toro, on December 14, 2019. So, let's see. Let's read the, uh, so I'm going to read the complaint affidavit. Let's see here. So it says here, this is, this is from his account. On 12 14, 2019, the victim, and it is redacted, her husband, Alexander Del Toro Sr., and their son, Alexander Del Toro Jr., which is the above defendant, where they were driving home from a night out together. During the ride home, the defendant got into a verbal argument with his father, resulting in the defendant striking his father in the face with his arm. The father resulting in the, de in the defendant striking of his father in the face with with his arm, the argument escalated when three arrived home and Del Toro Sr. was unable to find his redacted. That sounds like gun. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna guess that's what that means. And it continues here. Oh, no, no, it's not because it continues. Was unable to find his keys. There's no redaction there. Was unable to find his keys when they exited the car. The defendant and Del Toro Sr. escalated the, the incident by shoving and pushing each other. When Del Toro Sr. began to argue with the victim, doing the physical altercation, 
Del Toro Sr. pinned the defendant against the concrete wall while holding the defendant, the defendant's left arm behind him. As a result of being pinned into the wall, the defendant's glasses fell off his face, leaving him unable to see. The defendant, who was unlawfully carrying a concealed 9mm Glock handgun in a non-retention holster inside his right waistband, attempted to retrieve the firearm. During the physical altercation, the victim intervened between the two and was able to separate them. Once the defendant and Del Toro Sr. separated, the defendant produced the firearm, pointed it in the direction of the victim, and discharged a single round. The bullet struck the victim in her face and resulted in her death. I'm going to guess he was trying to point at his father, but it sounds like he still has his glasses off, but it doesn't... I'm not condoning what he did at all. Even if he did have his glasses on and he shot the father, it would still be, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be holding, it would be uh, excessive. It would be excessive. Doing a post-Miranda interview with the defendant, he admitted to carrying a concealed firearm without a concealed carry rep permit. The defendant admitted that he got aggravated during the physical altercation and pulled out the firearm, but he did not mean to discharge it. The defendant also stated without his glasses on, he is unable to see. So if you can't see, maybe you don't point the gun at anyone, or maybe you, you put the gun away, you drop the gun, you think? The defendant was unlawfully carrying a concealed firearm. The defendant produced a firearm during a physical altercation. When he was aggravated and unable to see, the defendant pointed the firearm in the direction of the victim and his father. The defendant discharged the firearm on one time, which resulted in the death of the victim. The defendant's actions showed a gross and flagrant course of conduct which was a reckless discharge for human life and the safety of persons exposed to the dangers. The family, that's the end of the, um, the affidavit, so I'm going back to the story now. The family had been out to dinner that night for the son's 28th birthday. And De La Toro and his father got into the, an argument on the way home. So we, we went through all that already. So what do you think should happen to, to, uh, to this, this guy? Shall he go to jail for, for a life sentence or shall he be put to death? Let me know in the comment. Texas man who shot dead attorney doing McDonald's dispute arrested was out on bail for assaulting family member. Uh, yeah, now let's not go with that one. We have limited time here. I'm not going to read every single story, but certainly if you're, if you're into to reading about these kind of things, crimeonline.com is very good. Very good. I've used them in the past, and I, I uh, would urge you to use it if find it and read the stories here because uh, they're very, not very good, but they're very well written if you're into this kind of stuff. Let's see what else. Nashville cop fired for groping woman's breast in OnlyFans video of fake traffic stop. Interesting. Uh, shall we do this one? Let's see. 
It says here, Nashville police fired an officer this week after finding that he Random thoughts, politics, 